Can someone who has basically no real knowledge of machine learning and just basic understanding of how to create Swift apps create an app from scratch that utilizes a custom-made machine learning model to classify actions? It might sound a little bit complicated when I put it like this and might be a little bit off-putting to some, but that's the test that I did. And last week, after only a couple hours, I was able to come up with this. A simple iOS app that takes in live video data from your camera directly from your phone and and is able to classify if you're doing a throwing motion or something else. It doesn't accomplish that much, but maybe think of it as an idea for an app that could maybe use machine learning to be able to tell the pitch count of a pitcher in a baseball game, for example. And here's the great thing about it. Throughout this whole process, I was able to create the machine learning model without having to write any actual machine learning code of any sort. It's a really good starting point for people that might not have as much understanding of machine learning, don't necessarily want to go in depth about it that much and just want to create something simple to see if their idea works, for example. So over the next three videos, what I'm going to do is basically recreate the process I went through to actually end up with the app I just showed you. So here's how we're going to go about it. This is going to be a tutorial made in three parts. The first part will be just showing you how you can use an app called Create ML on Mac OS that lets you create your own classifiers for a bunch of different things. I'll show you how I created my own model for the app that I just showed you and you can try to do the same for something that you might be interested in. In a second video, since I know not everybody is going to be comfortable with AV Foundation, I'll look at how you can actually use your phone's camera to stream data to your app that you can then use in whatever way you want. I'll also show you how you can preview that image on your phone as it's going through your camera. And finally, in the third video, we'll use that data that's streaming from our camera and actually use the classifier that we created in the first video to classify if we're actually doing a throwing motion or not on the video that we're streaming. So let's jump right into it for the first part and see how we can create a custom classifier with our own data set for the app that we want to create. And I really want to emphasize here that I am going to share the model that I created and the classifier that I created for this app if you just want to follow along with the coding part afterwards. But, but if I were you, I would actually try to go through the steps yourself and see what it entails to train a model by yourself, even if you're not writing any code. It doesn't seem like much, but there is actually quite a bit of work that has to be done just to prepare your data set and make sure things work the way you want them to once you actually train your model. So again, use the information that I share here and maybe try to create your own classifier for something you're interested in. So you have a better understanding of the whole process that goes behind creating a simple app like the one I'm sharing today. Okay, so let's jump right into it and see how we can create that classifier. Number one thing you're going to have to do is see if you actually have the create ML app installed on your computer. If you don't, there's going to be a link in the description below where you can see where and how to download that app. So we're going to go ahead and open that create ML app and create a new document, which is basically going to be a new project to create a classifier of any type we desire. As you can see inside the create ML app, there's plenty of different things that you can create classifiers. You can create an image classification model so that you can see what's the predominant thing that's showing inside a picture, or maybe an object detection model so that you can find where some objects are situated inside your picture and see what the picture is made up of. In our case, what we're going to use is the action classifier, which basically uses the vision framework to find a pose or a human body pose within the video that you're giving it. And by chaining up a bunch of those body poses, those human poses that it finds with the vision framework, you can kind of batch them all together and ask your classifier to figure out if there's an action or a motion that's being done within those frames. So we're going to go ahead and select the action classification choice and select next. We'll give it a name and call it YouTube throwing classifier. My documents, I have a machine learning thing, and so I'm going to create it there. As you can see, once you open that app, you end up with something that has nothing to do with code. So don't be scared. It's all a visual UI that's really easy to work with. And basically, all you need to do to come up with a model here is to give it a data set to be trained with. For those of you that don't know much about machine learning, a data set in this case is just going to be a bunch of videos that are labeled to be showing 
one action or another. What's going to happen is through that data set and the labeled videos, the model as is being trained is going to find similarities between the videos that you shared so that eventually it's able to actually recognize it itself. In the case of a video classifier like this one, it's really simple to do. All we have to do is create a folder that will contain our complete data set, all the video and labels that we'll be using to train our model. Within that main folder, we'll add one subfolder for every action we are trying to label. The label in this case will be the name of the subfolder itself. We then fill those folders up with the videos we're using to train the model for each of those labeled actions. It's as simple as that. So in this case, I have a folder with all the data for the classifier that I want to train right now. Within it, I have three other folders. One folder that's just a bunch of videos of people doing a throwing motion. So here's something to keep in mind. Your classifier is gonna try to find what it can most closely label. So then you can't only label throws, you also have to label other actions and perhaps something where the person that you see on the video is doing nothing at all, so that it has something to compare against, if you will. So in there, I also have a folder with a bunch of other motions. In that case, since it's a baseball throwing thing, I'll have people when they're catching the ball, when they're crouching, when they're turning around, when they're flailing their arms around because they missed their throw or something like that. And finally, I have a third folder, which is going to be basically just people doing nothing at all. Their arms to their side and not moving, so that it has something to be recognized when the thrower is not moving at all. So now we have a folder with all the clips that we want to use, and they're separated into labels in each of their own respective folders. So we're going to go back into Create ML and add this throwing data as our training data set. As you can see, Create ML already recognizes that each of those folders or subfolders are going to be a different label and match them that way to the clips that are inside them. Then you have a couple options that you can use as the parameters before you train your model. Number one, you have to choose the frame rate of the video that you're going to be using. In this case, we're just going to use 30 frames per second because the videos that I've taken are in 30 frames per second. And then we're going to specify how long the action duration is. In this case, a throwing motion is about, you know, half to one second long, maybe. So we're going to select one second for this. But maybe if you're classifying something like someone doing a burpee or, you know, squats or something like that, in that case, maybe it's a little bit longer, so you'd select Two seconds. And then finally, we'll check in the horizontal flip augmentation, which is basically just going to train the model to recognize the mirrored version of the videos that we've taken. If we've only added right-handed throwers to our data set, it should still recognize the left-handed one because it's just going to be mirrored. We can then, if we wanted, add a validation data, something that is outside of our data set, but that we can label so that the training data, you know, confirms its training against it. For example, we could add a bunch of other throwing motions in there and other of the other actions and of the non-action so that as it's training, the model can validate against that each time to see if the way it's training is going in the right direction. We can also leave that blank, which is what we're going to do in our case because it doesn't really matter. And in that case, I'm pretty sure what it does is just validate against the training data that you're using or a subset of the training data that you already specified. If you wanted to do something that's a little bit more clear, a little bit better trained, you should use validation data most likely. And then finally, you can also use some testing data so that your model, as it's being trained, can see how accurate it is. In our case, we're also going to leave that blank and we're just going to test it by hand after. But know that if you wanted to test the accuracy of your model in a more quantitative way, you could test it using the testing data there. Okay, so we have everything set and we're just going to go ahead and hit the train button. Now it's going to take a little bit of time to train and go through the 80 iterations that we saw earlier to find and figure out how to classify the data that we've sent it. And while this is happening, what I'm going to do is kind of give you some pointers on what you should use for the clips that you use as your training data. Number one, you're using an action classifier. And what it does behind the scenes is use the vision framework to figure out a human body pose within the clip that you're using in your training data set. It will then stack up a bunch of frames of the video and try to figure out if there's, you know, 
some similarities in the motions of the human body pose that it's finding within those clips. And to do so, the training model assumes that there's only one person within your scene. So as you can see in the videos that are you know, used in my data set, they're all cropped so that there's only one person within the frame every time, or at least one very prominent person in that clip. That way the model knows exactly, and since it assumes only one person, there's no risk of it being crossed up because there's multiple person within the clip that you're using. Don't worry though, that's only the case for the training of the model. You don't actually have to use a video that has only one person in it when you're actually using it within your app. But we'll come back to that a little bit later once we're actually working with Vision inside the iOS app to use the classifier. So number two, alongside making sure that there's only one person within your video clips, what you should focus on is videos that are stable so that the classifier doesn't interpret the movement of the camera as movement from the person itself. Best case scenario is to use a tripod or something like that as you're filming your own you know, image classification. But as you'll see, I just took a bunch of videos from YouTube and that still works. It's not the best, but it will do the job for a simple model just to showcase how it works. Number three, make sure to use videos where there's a good enough contrast between the person that's doing the motion you're trying to classify and the background around it. So that way there's no chance that there's gonna be any errors when the vision framework is trying to find a human body pose within your clips. Number four, try to make sure that there's different angles to the data set that you're using. Something from behind, from the side, from the left side, the right side, and the back a little bit from the top at an angle, etc. The more diverse your data set is while still showing the same motion, the better your classifier is gonna be at understanding and figuring out new situations that you haven't actually trained it with. So if I trained it all using the same video as you know the baseline and the training data set, it would probably have a tough time once I throw a completely different setting or angle at it. But if I use a little bit more variety in the data set to train it, it's gonna be a lot easier for the classifier to actually figure out what's going on within the clip that I'm showing it. And then finally, your classifier is only gonna be as good as the data you put in it. So make sure that you're clipping your content cropping it in the correct way so that it's clearly showing only the action you want it to show and make sure that there's something around at least 50 clips per labeled action so that it has enough data to actually train correctly. Okay, so we're back inside Create ML, and as you can see, it went through a bunch of iterations to try to figure out and train the model to classify the data that we put in. As you can see, my curve is pretty ugly. It's not really trending towards a higher accuracy and it's kind of plateauing around 80%. For the sake of this tutorial, it's still gonna do the job. It's still gonna be able to figure out when somebody is throwing. It might get a couple of false positives, but like I said earlier, it's all just a matter of how good your data set is. Best case scenario, if you were to film yourself in a bunch of different settings with a nice tripod and clip the videos correctly, you should have a curve that kind of trends toward a higher accuracy over the iterations. But still, in this case, it's gonna be good enough as you're gonna be able to see when I check the output. Of so then you can see the evaluation of how precise it was in labeling the different um, labels that you put in. You have a tab for the output where you have your actual classifier, which we're eventually gonna export into Xcode. And here's the most fun part. You also have a tab where you can preview your model with your own videos and see if it's working as you intended to. So what I did here is just go get some random video with a fairly prominent person in the video just playing catch. And I can use this to just see if my classifier looks to be working correctly. And you can do the same thing with whatever you use to train and see how your classifier might turn out once you use it inside an app. So it's done processing or you can just press play. And as you can see, it's going to be using one second chunks like we did in the settings that we specified at the beginning. And it's going to test in one second chunks and tell me what it think is happening within that second. We'll see if that works. And you can see that it's recognizing the throw motion as he's doing it. It's obviously not perfect in that setting because it's actually cutting in one second chunks and not 
using the last second, if you will, at every point. So what might happen is maybe you'll get the last couple frames of the actions and the first couple frames at the end of that, you know, one second window. And so it might not recognize it all the time, but if it falls into that one second chunk, it'll give you at least a good idea of if it's working or not. As you can see there, for example, he kind of starts his throwing towards the end of the frame. It's starting to recognize the throw and then he throws and it's kind of overlapping both. So it's having a bit of a tough time figuring out that it's actually a throw going on there. But if you would be using it within an actual app where you're really taking the last 30 frames at the moment you're doing your prediction, it would have probably caught that as you know, an actual throw at that point. So there you have it. And it wasn't any more complicated than that. You just have to create a data set following a couple pointers to make it more easily trainable. And for the model to be of better quality, once you actually train it, you just drop that whole data set within create ML and then preview it against a video of your choosing to see if it seems to be recognizing the actions that you've labeled correctly. And from there, you have an actual working model that you didn't have to write any code for and that you can import in Xcode and actually start working on within your app. And that's exactly what we're going to do in the next video. Again, I encourage you to try to build a model like this for yourself. It can be just about anything. Give it a try. See if it works. See if you can create a data set that gives you the output that you're expecting in a preview video after. So that way in the next videos, when we implement it within an iOS app, you can use your own and test it against your own motions in real time. All right. So hope that was enjoyable for you all. I will see you all in the next video where we set up AV foundation and our camera so that we can use camera data to use with this classifier. I'll see you then and until then, take care.